Okay, a couple more people coming in. I'm just letting them in. Get my glasses. There we go. Wow, we've gone from two to eleven in uh, in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Hey everybody, good morning. You all got to get up earlier. Or should we make this at 11 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> luckily, uh, luckily, I don't think any of us have any important appointments to worry about. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter, does it? Right. Uh, uh, somebody else, just a minute. They didn't mean uh, we now have 11. There we go. Now we are 12. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. I think I am, yeah, I am recording. There we go. Good morning. So yeah. we're at uh, our next session of uh, Windows 10. Uh, somebody sent a, a text saying could they have the, uh, the materials. Uh, as I've said in all the uh, sessions, please send me a, an email. Okay. I don't have time to, I, I won't remember it, and I don't have your email addresses and stuff, but if you send me an oh. email, I'll respond with the material. So my, my email address is, um, I have two email addresses, you can use either one, it doesn't really matter. The, the primary one is, here's my name on the screen, so the email address is Jeff underscore between, and then Calvariski, so there's an underscore, I got that years ago, at earthlink.net. Earthlink, E A R T H L I N K, all one word, dot net, not dot com, dot net, which is weird, but that's the way it is. So if you send me a, a one line email and say you're uh, in the Benson class on Windows 10, I will be more than happy to return by return of email within 24 hours, usually within a few minutes. Uh, you'll get all of the slides that we've got here. Okay, let's move forward. So, uh, <clears throat> back to here is my email address. It's on the second slide here. So if you want to write it down, just send an email to that address. Or I have another address, which is Jeff period Calvariski at gmail.com. Either one will work. It'll get to me and I will promise to respond to you. Okay, so getting back to where we were last week, we said, okay, what is Windows 10? Who remembers? What is it? What does it mean? Up, an operating system. It's the operating system. That's right. It's a very old term that dates back Off to li literally the 1970s, coined by IBM in the days of the mainframe. And the operating system was the piece of software, a very complicated piece of software, uh, that runs your computer. It's very, very complicated. It must have cost millions and millions of dollars to write, probably tens of millions of dollars to write. Uh, and yet, essentially, we now get it for free. So when you buy a computer, Windows is on it, it's built into the price and that's that, which is amazing because, uh, you know, in the very early days when Windows was on a fraction of what it is today, it wasn't nearly as sophisticated, you had to pay a lot of money for it, right? And then you had to install it and do all kinds of stuff and now it's there for you and it works. But that's the way it really should be. It's kind of like the engine of your car. You know, we don't expect to buy a motor car and then have to go and install the engine ourselves, right? You buy the car, it's got the engine in, you, you start the car and it goes, right? Or, or a bicycle. You don't want to have to, you know, assemble the bicycle that comes assembled. So basically, the operating system sits in the background, and mostly you don't even know it's there, which seems interesting given that we are having a whole course on it. But the, 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 the good news is you don't know it's there, so you don't have to really worry about it. It's it just working for you. It's, it's keeping your computer running. It's keeping you secure. It's allowing you to do things like copy files and store data and print things out and so on. It takes care of all of that. And it sorts out a million problems that you don't even know are occurring and it's fixing them uh, every day, right? Making sure that things are, are, are running as they should. This, uh, this sort of flag here with the four colors on uh, in the top right hand corner, that's the Windows logo. And you, some of you will see on your keyboard, uh, the third key from the left in the bottom row uh, either the second or the third key. Some machines it's the second key, some it's the third key. Um, uh, that, that has got the same kind of flag pattern on it. Some of them are, are curvy like this, some are rectangular, 
but it's still got the four little squares or four little rectangles, and that is, uh, that's Windows. And that key, of course, is called the Windows key, which we spoke about last week. So uh, the good news is we don't need to know a lot about uh, Windows. Uh, we know the keyboard. So we, we spent a little bit of time. I'm sorry, just let me let some people in. Uh, there we go. And we spoke about the keyboard and you know everybody knows the keyboard, but we suddenly found out, if you didn't already know, that there are some hidden things in the keyboard. There's the escape key at the top left-hand corner, which kind of uh, gets you which gets you out of things. So very often when you're kind of stuck, uh, just try pressing the escape key. And most times it'll get you out of what, what's going on. So right now, if I press the escape key, it will take me out of this, this, this Zoom and back to my Word document or whatever it was that I was working on before. It doesn't always work, but it's a pretty useful key. We've got the function keys at the top here. These keys at the top, F, they mark F1 to F12. On, on most laptops, it's, it's printed in very small print now because the function keys don't really do much anymore. They used to be very useful in the days before Windows 10. Uh, they're not much use anymore, so I don't even bother to talk about them. And then we spoke about the general keys, which everybody knows, caps lock and all that. But the ones that a lot of people don't know about are the control and the alt key over here and the Windows key down on the bottom left-hand corner. So we learned with the control key, what can we do? What's the control, the CTRL key, the one in the bottom left-hand corner? Uh, what's that useful for? Who remembers? The functions. Nobody? Control Z, undo. Control Z means undo, very useful key. So control by itself does nothing. Control it's, it's a weird C thing, why copy. they did this, I don't know, but they didn't ask my opinion. So control by itself doesn't do anything. But control pressed at the same time as another key does some very useful thing. So exactly as Sylvia has just said, and you get two extra bonus points for that, Sylvia, for the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, control Z, the letter Z for zip Z, uh, is a very useful key, and that does the undo. That's what I call the mm -hmm. oops key. So if you press mm -hmm. the control Z, in many cases, most cases, uh, whatever you just did, is undone. So if you just deleted something, it comes back. If you just inserted something, it goes away. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, accidentally, it, it's easy to happen, deleted the whole page on a Word document. It's quite easy to do that actually, uh, or, or a whole line. You just press the Control Z and that's the oops key and it's back where you were. What else can we use the Control key for? What's control the most important? Control C, use? copy. Control, Control C is C. the copy, right. And copy. where does it copy to? Oh, chip oh, paste. Clipboard. Clipboard. Yeah, clipboard. Copy to the clipboard, very good. And the clipboard is really just a hidden file in your computer. It sits somewhere in Windows. We don't have to know where it is. But it means that when you say, if you highlight some text, we'll talk about highlighting in a second. If you highlight some text, that says to Windows, that text that I just highlighted, whether it's in a, in a Word document or in an email or whatever, doesn't really matter. Uh, it could even be on a web page. We're looking at an Amazon page and it's having a wonderful sale on something. I can highlight the text that says, you know, buy these shoes at 25% off. And all of that text on the, on, the, on the web page, when I say Control C, will go to this clipboard, which is like a, a little file sitting somewhere in the computer. And it's, it's, a, it's a special file. It's not meant for you to keep information permanently. So you would not store your, you know, your, your Word documents and your healthcare information and your social security information. You wouldn't store that in, in the clipboard, although you could. It would just be a poor way to do it, a clumsy way to do it. So the clipboard is for quick stuff usually. I want to take that information from that Word document or take that information from that Amazon web page and then paste it somewhere else into an email or into a text or into a Word document or somewhere else. So you can imagine that the clipboard sort of sitting above your computer here. It's kind of in the third dimension and it can go down to any other application that's running. It's, it's the one thing that allows you to hop between applications. So 
you know, when you're in Word, you're in Word. You're typing a Word document. You're not doing an email or, or, or a spreadsheet. But the clipboard allows you to hop between them. So you can copy from a Word document into the clipboard and then go down and paste it, bring it back into a spreadsheet or a email or whatever you like. It's a very, very useful thing. So if Control Z copies it up into the clipboard, how do we get it back down? Control V. Control V. v. So the, the why V, I don't know. Maybe the V is it looks like an arrow going downwards, right? It's sort of this, this shape going down, right? I don't know why they made it V. But Control V now pastes it back. So the clipboard operates like an old clipboard. You imagine a sports a sports coach, they often had a clipboard, they have a piece of paper in the clipboard, they would write notes on it. And then at the end of the, the practice game or the end of the, the match, when they finished their notes, they would tear it and you take out the, the you take that page out of the clipboard and you throw it away. So the, the clipboard is conceptually the same, except it doesn't go away anymore. It used to, but it doesn't. So the clipboard retains that information now for as long as you like. Uh, how many items can I have in the clipboard? It used to be one. As soon as you copied the second one, it would overwrite the first one, which is really stupid, right? The clipboard now allows you to have any number of items. So, you know, you can keep 100, 500 items in it. It doesn't really matter, right? Of course, you wouldn't like to have too many because the clipboard is a, se a sequential story. You know, it goes item one, item two, item three, item four, in the order in which you copy them. So item number 100 would be way down. It would take you a whole lot of time to get down. You'd have to scroll through and find it. So very clumsy. So generally, we wouldn't keep more than a few items. In the um, you can delete items at any moment, any time you like. Uh, we'll see how to do that in a moment. And um, one thing I did suggest to you that is useful in the clipboard is to keep things there that you might use often. So, for example, if you write a lot of letters, I don't know, you know, you like to write letters the old-fashioned way, uh, maybe your, your name and address, which you put at the top, is, I'm lazy. Instead of typing it out, I just put it in the clipboard, and then I can paste it down into a new document. Well, I said, uh, you could keep your credit card number in there. So, if you go on the web and you want to do some shopping, and you want to use your credit card or your debit card, uh, just keep the number in the clipboard. Nobody else can get access to your computer unless, of course, you, sh you, know, you, you share it with a whole lot of other people, strangers and so on, like, like in, a, in, a, in an internet cafe. But most of us don't do that. We have our own computer. So, you know, the security is, is fairly good. But, you know, that's the only time I would say keep information in the clipboard. Nobody else knows it's there. And then you can just copy it down. So you might keep your credit card number or your social security number. Uh, but let's say if you keep your credit card number, don't keep the expiration date and the and the, the the cvv the three the three digits the the, the security is that's easy to remember right i know that my card expires in you know december 2024 or whatever it is so that's easy to remember but i can never remember the darn number you know these credit card numbers are so long or social security numbers or account numbers or whatever useful stuff you can keep in there and anything else you copy in there just just delete it as and when you uh uh, you know, when you don't need it anymore. So we spoke about all the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the various uses. We spoke about the insert key, the delete key, uh, the backspace key, <laughs> delete. So remember, delete deletes the, 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 the character to the right of your cursor, the little flashing line, and backspace deletes the character to the left. So backspace goes to the left, and delete goes to the right. Why we have two separate keys for that, I don't know, but that's just the way it is. Okay, uh, many laptops, as I said, have got, as I discussed last week, have got a, a numeric pad. The numeric pad is really just exactly the same as the numbers at the top, uh, you know, above the letters, um, except it's easier if you're typing a lot of numbers to go like this with one hand instead of having to go all the way across the top. For most of us who are not CPAs or doing taxes or whatever, it doesn't make a lot of difference. And some, some laptops, my laptop comes with the numeric pad built in. Some laptops don't have it. It doesn't really matter. If you have a laptop that doesn't have a numeric pad, but you do need to do all that kind of, you know, number stuff like this with one hand, you can buy a numeric pad, which you plug into a USB port. They cost nothing, about $10 or something like that. Again, most of us probably don't need it. <clears throat> so there's our friend, the clipboard. 
So we say control C takes it up to the clipboard. You can imagine the clipboard sitting up here somewhere in space. Control C takes it there. Control V brings it back. What else can we do with the control key? Bonus question. So we've had control C, control V, and control Z. There's control one more. A, control Alt Delete. Control Alt Delete. You can have Control Alt Delete. That is a, a, a sort of an obsolete thing today. So what did Control Alt works. Delete do? It used to reboot your computer. If you wanted to yes. restart your computer, you do Control. Uh -huh. So they had like we used to call it in the early days the three finger salute because you needed three fingers. Control and Alt with your left hand, and then Delete, which is in the top right hand corner with your right hand. And Microsoft deliberately made it hard to do so that you wouldn't ever accidentally restart your computer yeah. while you're busy working, right? You had to do it deliberately. You don't need that anymore. So control alt delete is essentially um, obsolete because there, huh? um, okay. there are now uh, Windows keys that will allow you to restart your computer if you wish. Okay? Yeah. So uh, that, that, that is a correct answer to the question, but really I was thinking of a more useful key than control, control a Control uh, A. No, 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 no. I'll give you a clue. It's between the Z and the C. Uh -huh. the, between the Z and the C. What's X. between the Z and the C? X. Z. Uh, X? X, exactly. And what is Control <laughs> X? Do you remember? I don't know what it does. Remember, X looks like a, like a pair of scissors. It looks like Delete a, a line. No, no. Together? No, 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 no. Cut. Together. It copies the text and then it deletes it. Together, copy and paste. So it's a cut. That's okay. exactly right. It's like cutting it out. So when you say yes, control C, it's gone. When you, say, okay. when you say control C, it copies it to the clipboard, but it leaves the original behind. So you know, there, so okay. have two copies, right? Control mm -hmm. X copies it to the clipboard and deletes it. Okay. Now, why would you want to delete it? Well, if I'm actually wanting to move some information, I want to move, let's say here, take this, the second bullet, which says you can then paste. Say I wanted, I decided to rearrange it and I wanted to put it at the top or at the bottom. I would highlight the whole paragraph, the whole bullet, or whatever many words as I want. I can highlight whatever I like. Control X and it would vanish. And then I could put my mm. cursor down at the bottom or at the top or wherever I wanted it to be. And then I would use the good old control V and it would bring it back. Right. Mm. So now I've copied it out, deleted it from where it was before and pasted it back somewhere else. So the equivalent is of mm. being able to take it out and paste it and, and, and move it down, you know, which means you can actually regard text on your screen, whatever you're doing, word document, Excel spreadsheet, uh, text messaging, email, you can imagine that you can actually go with your hands and so to speak, grab that text and take it out and move mm -hmm. it somewhere else. And the way you grab the text is by highlighting it. Now, who know, who remembers how you highlight the text? How do we, how would I highlight this bullet oh, here? No. This bullet, right? You tell, you hold it down and go across what you want to. Exactly. So in windows, this is a general thing that you must remember in Windows, this finger, your index finger, which goes on the left button of your mouse, the one on the left, if you hold it down, that is an instruction to Windows to say, I'm grabbing something. So if I put my cursor here in front of the letter Y, hold down the, the left mouse button, and then just drag it across. Watch what I'm doing, it won't do it on here because this is, this is a, a presentation, but if I did this and I just drag it across like this, let's say to the end of the word location, let's say I wanted to stop there, right? If I then now let go with my finger, no longer hold down the left button, that text will have changed color. On some versions of Windows, it becomes blue, in some it becomes a gray background, but it looks different to the rest of the text. And now if I say Control C, it will copy only that text to the, to the clipboard. Or if I say control X, that text will suddenly vanish and it'll be in the clipboard. What if I said, oh my God, I copied the wrong, the wrong bullet. I really meant to copy this bullet. Yeah, and I copied that one. What do I do? Undo. Control Z. Control Z and control it comes Z. right back. Control Z. So that's in a case where the oops key works. 
when you when you when you're doing this and you you need to practice it but it's really easy so uh, let's say i wanted to copy these three bullets this one that says to copy this one that says to paste and this one that says to move i want to copy all of them i can put my cursor here in front of the first t hold down the mouse oh. button and i can actually drag it at an angle which what i'm doing with my cursor i can drag it at an angle like that all the way down to there drag drag it at a, a left right angle um, and it will highlight all of those three. You don't have to go from left to right across all the line. You can go up and down or at an angle down to the right and okay. it will automatically cop. So if I go from here like this downwards, see what I'm doing down to here, it will highlight those three bullets, right? That keeps thinking, I uh, want to move on. See that? And now you can copy paste. You can do all of that stuff. It's really a very useful thing indeed. Okay. So, uh, how do we see the clipboard? Who remembers? Um, Control C. Nope. Control C uh, is copy. The, the, window, the Windows key? The Windows key and... and the, oh. Now, this is, this is not logical, but this is the way it is. The Windows key, the one between the Control and the Alt, the one that's got the Windows flag on it, you hold that down mm -hmm. and press con Windows key and V. The letter V. And v, v. So Windows V will pop up the okay. keyboard, the, the 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 clipboard on your screen. Sure. Now, if your computer is more than um, uh, I don't know about five years old or something, this may not work. For some reason, when they they only brought this in about two or three years ago, and for some reason it didn't necessarily work on older machines, but it works on most computers that. You know, even older ones, some of them, for some reason, I found that at Benson, they just don't work. Uh, but those are pretty old machines that were, were at Benson, you know, probably six, seven but years you, old. You, but, you, but, but you can still find it, though, if you're in Word or whatever. Uh, you click home and then click that little arrow that goes down. It, it's, it, it's right there. Yeah, exactly. But the, mm -hmm. the correct way yeah, to do yeah. it is the mm -hmm. is the Windows V key, right? That's the correct. And here's what happened. So a little window like this, you can see this up here in the top right hand corner, will pop up somewhere in the middle of your screen. It mm -hmm. may be here in the right hand corner, it's sometimes in the middle, sometimes on the left. I don't know how it decides where to put it, but it oh, pops up, is. right? And mm -hmm. basically you only see a few entries. So on the on the one that I've got here, as you can see on the screen, I've got two entries. Uh, the one at the top, that's sort of, you can see the blue line around it. And that says clipboard on Windows 10 rocks, right? That, I just typed mm -hmm. some text. Mm -hmm. And the second mm -hmm. one is actually a picture, right? So not only can you yep. copy text, you can copy photographs and pictures as well. So if you mm -hmm. happen to be on that Amazon, as I said before, and uh, not only do you want to get all the text about the wonderful pricing, but you might want the picture of the shoes or the computer or whatever it is, uh, exactly the same process. Hold the left cursor down and drag it over the picture and it will copy the picture. And here's the picture, a graphic that's sitting in the clipboard, right? And so uh, if, I, if I just click wherever, now let's say I would like to bring back that text. It says clipboard in Windows rocks. All I have to do is have my cursor in my document, my Word document, my Excel spreadsheet, my email, whatever it is, where I want it. And just by clicking on it here, just a click on that one that says clipboard on Windows rocks, that will immediately appear at where the document is in my, you know, where my cursor is in the document. And it can be in any document you like. If I wanted to get the picture, all I have to do is click on the picture, right? Now, if there are more than two or three that can appear on the screen, you will see a little scroll bar will open on the right hand side. And uh, a scroll bar is a very useful thing in Windows. It allows you to scroll up and down so we don't need those obsolete page up and page down keys that for some reason are still on our on our keyboard they're completely obsolete it's much easier to grab the so there'll be a scroll bar it'll be a little gray bar on the right and there'll be a little block at the top a little darker gray block and all you have to do is grab that darker gray block and you can move it down and up and the thing will scroll up and down for you so the question is how do you grab it how do you tell Windows I want to grab it? And I've already told you yeah. how we grab things. Left, left, left click on left the uh, mouse button. So you, you pointed it 
at that little gray bar, unfortunately you don't see it here, but uh, as soon as I put the third one in, I should have put three in, I guess you would see the little bar. You point at the little, the little dark gray block, you hold the left mouse button down, you see where my cursor is right now, where my red cursor is, and then I can drag it up and down. You see how the cursor's changed to a, right. in this case, a little circle? Well, that would allow me to drag this up and down and I could go down and perhaps my credit card number, I keep down at number 10. So nobody would even know it's there, right? I just could drag it down to that, click on it. And if I happen to be on a web page that says, please enter your credit card number, when I click on it, it will instantly oh. appear there, right? So it's useful for uh, failing memories such as what I have. Fortunately, none of the younger people on this course have that problem, but I have... Uh, mm -hmm serious cases of senioritis and I can't remember. Uh, that's all kinds of useful stuff you can, you can retain in the book. Okay, questions? So yeah, they are, okay. We've, we've seen this, so Windows and V brings up the clipboard and that's about all you need, okay. Uh, uh, obvious question. When the clipboard pops up, you get that little thing that appears in the middle of your screen. How do you get rid of it? How do we get rid of it? Click on the X. <laughs> there are two ways to get rid of it. One is, I told you at the beginning, the escape key. So if oh, you yeah. escape, it says, I don't want that anymore, and it goes away. Or you can just click somewhere else on the screen. So uh, if we had this screen here, and the clipboard had popped up, if I just click anywhere else, like over here, put my cursor over, over here anywhere, right, and click, the clipboard will go away, as it just did mm -hmm. there, right? You see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some mm -hmm. other value uses of the clipboard, of the control key, not very useful anymore. Control P, P for print, will print the whole page, right? So the whole page, you can print the whole page. If you're looking at a, at a, at a very nice page on Amazon or uh, you know, CNN News or whatever, and you wanted that page, you can print the screen. So control P prints the whole page on the screen. Uh, in, in, when you're editing things, control B, well, bold the highlighted text. If you highlight some text, Control B bolds it. Control I italicizes it, makes it lean over, and Control U underlines it. We don't really need those three when we're using something like Word because it's got buttons to do that. But if you're doing an email or a text, okay. uh, there are no buttons to do that in most cases, strangely enough. And so this is a way to be able to bold, highlight, to underline, uh, in other documents other than Word documents. <clears throat> right, so then we spoke about the desktop. So you, when you boot the computer, or if you look in your file folders, and we we're gonna talk about that this morning as well, one of the options is the desktop. And the desktop is like the first place you can come to in Windows, right? And it's, a, it's sort of a blank screen that looks like this. It's completely dark, there's nothing on it. And then you can put icons on it. You can put as many icons as you like. Um, some people put everything, all their files, everything on the desktop. That's a kind of sloppy way to do it. Uh, I'll talk about a much better way to do it in a moment. But each of these little icons now allows me to do stuff. And you can see, if you look carefully, that there are two kinds of icons, right? There are those with a little blue arrow like this one over here, right? This one over here, got a little blue arrow. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. And then those that don't yeah. have a blue arrow, for example, this one over here. So here's one that has a blue arrow, and right next to it is one that doesn't. So who remembers what the difference is between the ones with a little blue arrow and the ones that are not? Oh, I don't know. Um, That's a hard question, right? Oh. Double bonus points if you can remember. Okay, it's actually very easy. Uh, okay. And we just have to remember it. There's no specific reason for it. This is just the way they've done it in Windows. The little blue arrow are the ones that are actual apps. They are programs that do something. So okay. if you click on that icon, so if I click on this icon over here, you see where my cursor is? If I double click on it, or single click, oh, I'll see who you are. it will jump to that program. Can you see where my cursor is? No. It will jump to that particular program. So that could be a word. I don't that, you see know, your that, blue cursor. Say again? I don't see your blue cursor. My cursor is red. Oh, what you keep saying is blue. What you said was blue. There's, There's an arrow. arrow. You see the little arrow here? Yes. See the little blue arrow? No. See the little blue arrow here? 
So no. when you've got a little picture, you see a little picture? Um, on the third line, the third one in from the left. The third line from the top, the third oh, one in from the left. Are, okay. You see I the see little it. blue arrow next to it? And quite okay, a few of them it, have yeah. got this little blue arrow. That so means small. if I click on it, it's going to open that app, that program. Okay. Okay, I get The it. ones without the arrow are not programs. They are documents. They can be Word documents okay, okay. or spreadsheets or whatever. And if you click on one of those, Windows will figure out which app it needs to open that document. So here's a document. Can you see this one here? Second line from the bottom, the last one on the right. Can you see this one? Yes. It's got a big W on it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Who That's knows what big W stands for? Word. Word. Microsoft Word, right. Word. So that's a Word uh -huh. document. It's something that that's I typed at document. some stage in the past. So if I now double click on that, Windows says, well, I need Word to open this document. So don't worry, I'll do that for you. And Windows will then open Word and open that document and it will position it at exactly the place in that document you were last time before you saved the document, right? So mm -hmm. that's the difference between these. You can see all of them are either one or the other. They got this little blue arrow. See the third one on the left from on the top line? There's the blue arrow. That means yeah. that's an application, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or right next to it is one that doesn't have the blue arrow, and that is a document of some kind, right? So you don't really need to care what kind of document it is, whether it's a spreadsheet or a PDF document or a Word document or whatever. It doesn't matter. My Windows will do the job for you. It will say, I know what docu what application opens that, you know, can, can understand that document and it will open it up for you, right? But just the way Windows is done, that you can't read a Word document except with Word. Only Word knows how it's structured and all the tricks of the trade, right? But in the old days, you had to remember which, which app to use. Now Windows says, I'll do it for you, okay? So here's your clipboard, your, your desktop. It's kind of like the clipboard in a sense, sort of like the clipboard. This is all a whole lot of programs and documents and they can all be on your um, desktop. But in general, as I said, that's, that's a kind of sloppy way to do it because eventually you're gonna run out of space on the desktop and the desktop is for some reason or other, not even alphabetical. They just sort of puts them in in random orders. So it's really hard to find stuff after a while. So the desktop's not a good place to keep stuff long term to keep all your documents and stuff. we're going to come up with a much better way of doing that in a moment so here's the desktop and uh, uh sorry let me go back one line uh one slide let me go back to the previous slide so you'll see oops you'll see that the, the desktop actually has two components so there's this big black section right this dark section here where there are all these icons on and then there's this light blue section across the bottom. And the light blue section across the bottom is very, very useful indeed. It's called the taskbar. It's very similar to the bottom line on your phone, right? So on your phone, you've got all your icons. The bottom line is the one that always stays there. Even if you scroll over to the right or the left, the bottom line stays there. This is very similar. The taskbar on the left here will have, you can see all these little icons sitting down at the bottom. Those are either your favorite apps or the ones that are actually running in the computer at the moment. So you can have as many apps as you like running. You don't have to delete. When you finish your Word document, don't bother to close out Word. Just, you can go on to your email or your spreadsheets or whatever. It doesn't matter. And the beauty is those documents just stay there. Don't forget to save them. But you don't need to close out apps. There's plenty, as long, you know, you've got plenty of memory in the computer. And it's very clever at keeping multiple, multiple applications open. So any application that you are currently using will appear in the bottom line. And those that you want regularly, you can, so they, they, they call it pinning to the taskbar. You can pin it to the taskbar so that it's always there. So my regular apps like Word and, and, and my email and, and, for example, here's Chrome. So you see this one down in the bottom left-hand corner, the third one from the, from the left, the little circular one that's Chrome, my browser. I'm using the browser all the time. So I keep it there all the time. It means I don't see I don't your taskbar. Sorry, one second, let me finish, please. I don't, I don't, I don't see your taskbar. I don't see your taskbar. 
You do. It's at the bottom. It's the bottom line of the, of, on, on the screen that you're looking at, right? Well, it's not it? on my screen. What do you it's see? It's favorite apps. It's what? on mine. It's what are you seeing? It's the one that has that the zoom on it and the chrome at the very bottom. Yes, no, exactly. I, it says right? favorite apps. Right. So you oh, there's, a, there's a there's a there's a blue underneath line the black. A, beneath the black at the bottom is a blue bar. And right in the yes. middle, it says favorite apps with an arrow, apps. red arrow pointing that. to yes. You see that? Mm -hmm. Everybody see that? I just see at the bottom of this red line. Bottom of I, which red no, line? No, no. Below well, that. I, my computer don't isn't going down that far. I don't know why. Uh, you, 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 should, you should be seeing exactly what I'm seeing on my screen, which is the, 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 the whole black Windows desktop and then a blue bar across the bottom, right? I'll listen, I don't see it, I'll listen. Okay, well, I don't, know, I don't know why. Something something specific to your computer. Does everybody else see it? Yes. It says, can you see a, a line, a, a blue line, a blue bar at the bottom that says, favorite yeah, I, apps? I yeah. yeah, it's my cursor. Look at what my cursor is saying. Yeah, see where my cursor is pointing, it says favorite apps. There's a line uh -huh. that's, do you see this, this word that says taskbar? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So that's an arrow pointing down to the taskbar, and the rightmost part of the taskbar, you see this over here, with another arrow, is called the action center. So it reserves the right part for what we're going to see in a moment. And all of the left are all the apps that either you want on a regular basis or that are currently running in your computer. So don't worry about it if you can't see it on the screen. When you go to your own Windows, you will see it. Windows will make sure that it's at the bottom. It's just, a, it's exact, you know the bottom line on your phone? It's got the apps that mm -hmm. are your most favorite apps, but it's only got four or five of them. Here on Windows, that, on Sylvia? Windows, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have 20 or 30 of them, it doesn't See matter. See that, Sylvia? Say that again. I'm sorry, Mr. Jeff, I was showing Sylvia what the bar looked like. Okay, yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't have that on. On mine, my last is mute, stop video, participants, chat. But I was showing her the same picture, Mr. J. Yeah. Okay, all right. right. Yeah, I see, stop I see that. yours, I see yours. Good, yeah, I see okay. okay, cool, cool, there we go, yeah, okay. Stop, so for Mr. some Jeff. reason, your computer, I don't know, maybe it's your screen or something, I'm not sure, but let's move on. It's not that important, because as soon as you go to your own Windows, now we're out of this presentation, you will see that bar because that's part of Windows. And so any app that I want, I can put there. So the, 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 the reason that I, I like that bottom is I'm really lazy. I don't want to go around and look on the desktop for my Word or my Excel or my emails or whatever. I keep them all in there, right? So the first time you open, let's say, if you look up here uh, on, the, on the desktop, second line, second from the left. See that circle with the four colors in it? Uh, red, yellow, green, and blue. Yeah. Oh, that's Chrome. Yeah, Chrome. Right? It says Chrome. underneath it, Chrome. Yeah. That's the browser. I use it all the time. So instead of going to look for it, you open the browser. It will appear immediately because it's now open and running. It will appear in the taskbar. And then you can pin it to the taskbar. Now, what does that mean? Pinning it to the taskbar means it. keeping it there. It. Even when I close it out, keep it there, right? And how do you pin it okay. to the taskbar? Uh, the little icon down at right, the bottom. Right, Chris. Right. You right click on it now. Uh -huh. so here's the other thing. There's just two real important things I need to teach you about Windows. One is left click means grab something, right? I want to grab okay. some text or some picture or something. The right button, the one that you use your middle finger for, the right button, this one here, this one here. If you hold that down, that usually, not usually, always brings up another little menu. So in many places in Windows, there are more things you can do, but you don't want the screen all cluttered up with menus. It'll drive you nuts. That's how it used to be in the early days, and it really could drive you nuts, which menu was which. So all you do is you point at something and press the right button, and in many cases, a little window will pop up allowing you to do more things. So if, if let's say I've got this button here, this third one from the left at the very bottom in the blue area, which is Chrome. If I point my cursor at it and right click, a little menu will pop up and one of the options will be pin this to the taskbar. Pin to the taskbar means 
All you do is click on it and it remains there forever. If you don't want it anymore, you point at it, right click, and now the little menu won't say pin anymore because it's already been pinned. It'll say unpin. I don't want to do it anymore. Just unpin it and it'll go away when you, when you don't need it. So that's a very useful place to keep your favorite apps uh, that, that you use a lot, your, 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 your Chrome to go to, 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 the, to the internet, to go and see Amazon and CNN and whatever the, the websites yeah, are that yeah. you like to go to. Um, your email is a very useful thing to have there because we do that all the time. <clears throat> uh, this one here that uh, I'm going to talk about in a moment that looks like a file folder, the fourth one from the left in the blue bar, I'm going to talk about it in a moment. That's how we look at all our files in Windows. Those are very, very useful things indeed. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, the, the, um, the, the action center on the right, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I'm just gonna bounce over. It's got three main icons on it, well, four really. It's got uh, this one here that looks like a loudspeaker and that's your audio level. So here it is. And in, you can either, on most computers, you've got a button that can make it louder or softer. Here, all you have to do is grab this little bar, this little blue bar. Everybody see the little blue bar, the little blue yes. line? And you can drag yep. it left mm -hmm. or right. How do, mm -hmm. oops, how do I grab it? Left, so left do I left, grab left, it left, and move so it click. left or right? I pointed it and I? Click. Left click. Left click. Left and left hold left. the button left down. Click. So we pointed it and hold the left button down. As soon as I do that, I've now grabbed that little blue line and I can drag it right and left. And as soon as I let go the, the left mouse, the left mouse button, everything's back to normal. See that? The second one shows me what, you know, what network I'm connected to and how strong the signal is. Sometimes, you know, if you, you know, right now, let's say on, on Zoom, you really, I'm fading in and fading out and the sound is bad. If you looked at your network, you may see that you don't have, you know, four, four little circles here. It's like four bars on your phone. You may only have one, so you're in a bad place for, for your signal. You're, you either need to move to another place in your house or move somewhere where the signal will be better. But that's, that's about the only time we'd ever use that. And then the right one shows you the um, battery. Right. Mm -hmm. So in my case here, the battery is 100%. Obviously, there's no bar. There is a bar here. But that bar, I can't grab it and move it. Why not? Why can't I grab this bar this here? It's a setting. It's the battery, right? It's, I can't make setting. the battery go bigger or smaller. I can only make the battery get more full by plugging it in. So you can watch this, you know, when it gets down to below about a quarter or something, that's, the, you know, that means that your laptop is running out of battery and it's time to plug it in, right? For some reason, Laptops, even though they're big, powerful machines, your, your battery is a battery about this long, you know, sort of wrong rectangular, it's, it's huge. They only run for a few hours, two, three hours, uh, whereas your phone might run the whole day. I'm not quite sure why that is. Mm -hmm. but that, that is yeah, so you, you're, you know, if you're not plugged in, your, your, your laptop will usually run out of battery, no matter what you're doing. If you're only just typing or you're watching movies or whatever, it will, so now I've just got a message that says my battery is running low. So I've got to find out why. What? One second. Ooh. Hey, Sylvia. Hi. Hey, bro. Where did you go? You, look, you just got here. No, I've been on all the time. Oh, okay. There we go. That was the most perfectly timed message I've ever got. I <laughs> it know. Said, the, 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 my, my computer was plugged in, but the, 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 the battery cable has got two pieces to it, and the one had come out yeah. from the other. So it was yeah. what well, it pulled slightly yeah. out when I plugged it in, so it wasn't charging, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I should be watching yeah. my battery too, right? So uh, that's about yeah. the only thing. Yeah. Ah, if you have an older computer and your battery is gone, is it, is it okay if you, you just keep it plugged in? Just keep it plugged in, exactly. Okay. exactly. You, you don't really need to replace the battery, do you? No, you not at all. Yeah, okay. you know, uh, I, I uh, keep my computer plugged in all the time. Right. Okay. It doesn't overcharge it. Um, and unless you're moving it around, if you're not actually using your computer on the go in different places, 
it's all in the, you stay in the same place all the time then you don't need the battery at all you can just plug it okay. in and the batteries are expensive though you know those batteries I cost know. quite a lot of money right a new battery is i don't know 60 70 80 dollars on, on, on most mm -hmm. it's quite an expensive item so if you don't actually need to move around just keep it plugged in right and um uh you know the one thing also uh, i might mention we've spoken about it before every now and again usually about three or four times a year a message will pop up and saying you have an update microsoft is download it wants you to download an update my recommendation to you is always do that but in the old days microsoft used to just just start running the update and sort of kick you off now they're more you know more polite and it says do you want to do the update now or you want to do it later if you're not doing something important do it now go and have a cup of coffee by the time you come back or have lunch it, it'll be done it usually takes five or ten minutes if you're busy in the middle of something and you don't want to you're busy watching a movie or something like that or you're shopping or whatever you want to do whatever you happen to be doing then just click on the button and say call me later in fact you can re you can actually set it you can say I want you to do this update at nine o'clock tonight. I usually do it at night. I work until six or seven or eight o'clock. I'm seldom working much beyond nine o'clock. Uh, if you keep it plugged in all the time and, and open, turned on at nine o'clock, they will do the update and tomorrow morning when you come in, uh, it'll be done. Or you could do it at 11 p.m. or any time you like. You can do it at 12 noon if you want to go, even if that's when you have lunch. So uh, always do the updates. They are very, very important. Um, you may be exposing yourself to security problems uh, if you don't do the update because many of the updates are fixing security weaknesses and many of the updates are also bringing in new features that you know make it run a little better a little smarter and do some cleverer stuff that you didn't have before mostly the only stuff that's really important are the security updates but Microsoft doesn't tell you what they're doing they obviously don't want to tell the bad guys you know about the security weaknesses so you don't know, but somewhere in that update will be they're fixing some kind of weakness that it would allow a bad guy to get into your computer or do something nasty to you. Uh, the other thing that's also on that, uh, excuse me, on that uh, uh, down at the bottom in the bottom right hand corner here of the blue bar, the far right hand corner at the bottom right hand corner of your windows uh, is the date and time. And you can always see the date and time. If you click on the date and time, a little calendar will pop up and you can Let's say you want to know, you know, when somebody's birthday is in October, you can click on the little calendar and you can scroll it forward to October and see that ah, October the 14th is going to be a Saturday or whatever it is, right? You can look forward and backward in time. You can reset the calendar. If for any reason it's gone wrong, it, it, it automatically updates itself every day and you can reset the clock, right? The clock is very clever. Uh, it maintains itself all the time. Uh, even if you change time zones, you go to California, it will automatically sense that and change the time to California time. Uh, if it doesn't, you can click on it and move the clock forward or move the clock backward. I seldom want to do that, but I often look at the date. Uh, you know, the most common thing, especially in today's world is, I don't even know what day of the week it is, let alone what date it is, right? Well, is today the 21st of June or the 28th of June or whatever? The little the, the, the date and time will, will give you that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move beyond this. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the Windows file system now. Okay. Now, this is one of the most important things in Windows. <clears throat> and most people sort of, sort of know about it, but they don't really understand what's going on. It's actually very simple, right? It's very, very clever and very, very simple. So this icon here, uh, which looks like a file folder, right? That's the icon for the file system. And all the files are stored, all your information is stored in files, exactly like this manila file, right? Except they're not manila files, they are electronic. But conceptually, they're the same. So I keep all my documents in a file cabinet and they're stored alphabetically. I've got A, B, C, D, E. And if I wanted to know about my social security, all my stuff about social security is somewhere under S right? Or taxes are under T or, uh, you know, whatever. Exactly the same here, except this is much more powerful, much cleverer. So first of all, there are two things we need to know. You have a, a hard drive on your computer. We call it a hard disk drive, an HDD. 
And that's a little small spinning plate in your computer. It's usually next to the, you know, the, uh, the, the, um, um, uh, you, you, you'll have a rectangle in the middle of your laptop that you can move your finger on to move the mouse. Um, it's usually stored inside the, the, the computer to the right of that, but you can see it. If you put your ear to your laptop, you will hear the little device spinning. You'll hear a high pitched wire. It's spinning very, very fast. It's only about this size, but it's spinning around like, remember an old LP or a CD? And the information that you write to your disk is stored on that hard drive. Modern, more modern computers of the last, the, you know, the past, say, year or two are starting to go away from the hard drive. I no longer have a hard drive in mine. It has what is called a mm -hmm. solid state drive. And a solid state drive is exactly the same thing, except it doesn't have a physical device spinning anymore. It's more like a, remember the thumb drive? You, know, you can put a thumb drive in your computer, a little, mm -hmm. little thing you can buy that you can store information on. A solid state drive is just like a much bigger version of that. And the beauty of that is it uses less electrical power and it's about 20 times faster. So if you have a solid state drive in your computer, it will boot up in the morning if you turn it off and turn it on again in, in less than 10 seconds. Whereas if you have a hard drive, it may take sometimes as much as a minute or two to load in all of Windows and all the programs and so on. Not a big difference, but the solid state drive is much, much faster, right? Uh, <clears throat> All the drives, what we call them drives, it's the places you can store. You can have multiple drives on your computer. And they usually have a letter, not usually, they always have a letter, C and then a colon. So a capital C colon is the C drive. Capital D colon is the D drive and you go all the way to Z, right? You can have many, many drives. Most of us just have the C drive and that's all that's important to you, right? Everything is stored on one drive and everything is on, on, on the C drive. Today also, some of our drives can be in the cloud, right? So if you use Dropbox or something like that, where information is stored up in the cloud, and the cloud simply means somebody else's computer. We're storing information on Google's computer or Amazon's computer or Apple's computer. They, they all give us free space. That looks exactly the same as a disk drive to you. So the D drive on my computer might be Google Drive. And that means inf my information is being stored on Google's computer, right? And that means I'll never lose that information because even if I lose my computer or the computer breaks or it gets stolen or whatever, or it just literally wears out and doesn't work anymore, all my data is still on that D drives somewhere up in the cloud, as we call it, stored on Google's computer or Amazon's computer or Microsoft's computer or Apple's computer. All of them offer us free storage, right? Mm -hmm. And these devices, these, these uh, drives can be very, very big. Okay, so now on the drive, each window stores all your data in files. So a file is just a place where a specific piece, one or more pieces of information are stored. So I could have a, I could have a file that says taxes, right? And that would be a folder, not a file, excuse me, a folder. Right, so a folder contains many, many files, and my folder called taxes might have taxes 2017, taxes 2018, 2019, whatever. Or I could have a folder called family, and then under family, I would have another subdirectory, you know, child one, child two, child two, three, or grandchildren, or whatever. I can divide these up into any arrangement that I like. Now, every document you created is called a file. So a file has got actual information in it. And the type of file we call the file extension. It, it appears at the end of the name of the file. It's usually, it starts with a period and then it's got a three or four character abbreviation. So if I have a file called <clears throat> um, my letter, right, which I did in Word, it would be called my letter dot docx. So documents typed in Word will right at the end have a period and then the name docx. So that's how Windows knows that if you click on a docx document, it's a Word document. It will open Word for you. Or it could have .xls or .xlsx. Excel, Excel. That's an Excel spreadsheet. So the, the names are fairly meaningful. Doc is Word document. Excel is Excel spreadsheet. 
Uh, we can also have MPG3 and MPG4. Those names are less meaningful, but <clears throat> the M stands for movie. So forget about the other letters. So MPG3 or MPG4 files are movie files. There are also files that are .mov movie as well. Why they're different standards doesn't really matter, but a .mpg3 file is a movie file. Uh, if I send you a, th this material, I'm gonna send it to you in a format called PDF, which stands for personal data format. Doesn't matter what it means. It's just a very convenient way of transferring information. And PDF files are, you need, uh, you need a special program uh, that will open it. And I'll talk to you about that later on, you know, where you get most of these programs are free and you can download them and install them on your computer, right? Um, <clears throat> and so uh, if it is a PDF file, when you double click on it, the PDF program will open up and you can read the document. Uh, files, as I said, can be stored in a folder. So a folder is just a collection of files. You can have one, two, three, 10, 100, 1,000 files in a folder doesn't matter. Now you would never put a thousand files in one folder, you know, in your, in your physical file, file system, you know, where you're storing paper file, but you can certainly do it on a computer. The folder can also contain another folder. We call that a subfolder. So for example, I might have a folder called taxes and then under taxes, I have another folder that says taxes 2017, taxes 2018. Or like I said, I might have a folder called, uh, you know, family photos. And then under that would be uh, another subfolder for my first child, my second child, my third child, or my grandchildren, or whatever. You can call those folders and the subfolders, anything you like. And they can go on as many as you can have a false folder, which contains another folder, which contains another folder. You can go down as many levels as you like. I don't recommend that. You know, one or two levels uh, is usually enough for most purposes. No limit to the number of files. And a file name, the name of a file can be 128 characters long, letters and numbers, Ooh. right? So this particular um, PowerPoint presentation I've got, I could call it Benson Center, notice spaces and everything, Windows 10 class, section three of six, and the date, or anything I like, right? You're almost not limited. Notice I've got spaces in it, I've got commas in it, I can write, it, don't, uh, it doesn't include the um, quote marks at the beginning and the end. That's just to show you that. So the file would be without the quote marks, Benson Center, Windows 10, Glad, blah, 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 right? You can make them as long as you like, as meaningful as you like, or you can use real short names and, you know, you, know, you, can, you can call a file just kids. That's pictures of all your kids or your yeah. family. Or you can use a longer name up to you, right? The only thing that Windows doesn't like is in your file name, you can't use these special characters, question mark, uh, exclamation point, slash, and slash, less than or greater than. But these are unlikely to be things that we're going to put into a file name. So it usually will never worry you, right? But spaces and commas and dashes, which makes it easy to read, are perfectly okay. And you can make it as long as you like or as short as you like, right? I tend to use fairly long names because then I don't have to remember what's in this file, right? Right. If you've got a file called X3, I have no idea what's in X3. It's much better to call it pictures of my grandchildren or, uh, you know, letters to the IRS. If you've ever had to write letters to our friends, our good friends of the IRS, you could certainly call it letters to the IRS or whatever you want. Okay. Jeff, <clears throat> Jeff, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, sometimes when I, like say I'm working in Word and then, or, or something, I say I want to save it. Mm -hmm. And when they put it down there, it doesn't say what I wanted to say. Should I back out all, like oh, well, the uh, question. Okay. So we, we're really hopping across to Word and Excel, but that's, this is a good time. You have about two buttons in your top left-hand corner in all of the Windows software, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. There are two, two buttons. Uh, both have got like a little diskette. It looks like an old diskette. And one has got a little arrow on and one doesn't. So the one with the arrow is save. As. That's where you save your file. So the one with the little arrow is save as. And save as means save this file and I will tell you what the name is, right? 
So if you hit the save as button, it says, what do you want to call it? And it will assume it's going to call it a uh, new file or something stupid like that, right? It gives it a name. But you can just overtype that and say, no, I don't want to call this new file. I want to call this letter to Dr. Smith. I had to write a letter to my doctor or no. letter to the IRS or spreadsheet of my budget for this year or whatever I want to call it. The next time you save it, don't press the one with the arrow, which is save as, press the other one. It, they, they look exactly the same, like a little diskette. Just click on that. That means save. And what it, what it says to Windows, just save it to the previous name I gave it. I gave it, right? So you then never have to type that name in again. See that? Mm, I see that. But then sometimes when I save something, Jeff, and then when I go to open it, it comes out in a lot of gibberish, like it doesn't know what it is. Well, you have to open it with the correct program. So if you saved a Word document, don't try and open it up with Excel. It, it doesn't understand it. Why this is a strange, it's also a leftover from the early days. You have to have the right program, okay? So if it's a Word document, dot, doc, X, then Word will open it and it'll be perfect. But if you try and so open it with the wrong program, you'll get gibberish, yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is when I save it and it has the, the DOC on it, don't back that out. Don't Just back that out. No, 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 don't back that out. So if you've called your, 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 your file, um, you know, letter to, you know, the president of the United States, if you feel strongly about something and you're writing a letter to the White House, it'll call it letter to the president of the United States, dot, doc, X. Don't back out the doc X, otherwise it doesn't know what this is. Uh, kind of okay, strange. I think, that's, I think it, that's what I do it's sometimes. It's so smart, it would figure out what it is, but it doesn't. It needs those dot stuff at the end, otherwise it doesn't know what it is. So very often people say, well, I don't want this dot doc X, and they back it out. And that... Now, usually Windows is clever enough to put it back. When it saves it out, it'll put the doc X back in for you. You may not even notice it. But sometimes if it doesn't, now, now there's no way to know what the heck this thing is, right? It could be a spreadsheet, could be a document, could be an email. I don't know what it is anymore. So the dot doc X is, is kind of like your last name, right? Most mm -hmm. times you don't need your last name. You, when you're talking to your friends, they call you Rosa, right? The only time you need your last name is maybe you're dealing with the government or the, the, the city. And now they need to know your whole name. A silly example, but you see what I mean, right? Without your last name, they don't know. They've got lots of roses, right? But it's exactly the same with this. I've got, I, can have, I can have two files with exactly the same name. One is a Word document. One is a spreadsheet. I can have both of them. They've got exactly the same name. But Windows will say one is .docx, Extension. one is .xlsx. See that? It's like giving the last name, the, the surname, the family name. You see that? Oh. But the idea, well, Jeff, so when you save it, do not mess with those last four characters. Uh, never delete them because otherwise you essentially have lost your document. Now, now Windows sort of doesn't know what it is, right? It can't, if you had two documents with the same name, one called .docx and one called .xlsx, Windows knows the first one is a Word document, the second one is an Excel spreadsheet. You delete those last four characters. Now it's got two files with the same name. I don't know what it is. You know, the information is kind of lost. See that? Don't. Yeah, so then it starts asking you what language you want. It's kind of like kind of telling you the land. That's a better example than the last name. It's kind of like saying this document is in German, but this document is in Chinese, right? Well, if I didn't know that and I opened the document and I don't speak those languages, I wouldn't know what the heck it was. Was it Chinese or Japanese? Was it German or Swedish? Is it French or Latin? They all look the same to me, right? But to the computer, if I tell it this document is written in, uh, in, in, in Chinese, it will use the appropriate Chinese character set, right? And so you, you can, in fact, with Windows, have documents in other languages, other, other scripts. You can have Russian, you can have Hebrew, you can have Arabic, you can have Chinese, you can have Japanese, but it needs to know what language it is in order to be able to translate the characters and show them you know, in Japanese instead of in English character. Okay, so how do we look at our files? Well, we use uh, this piece of software, and I'm going to finish off now. We're nearly done. Called Windows File Explorer. It's one of the most useful pieces of software. 
right? Um, and Windows File Explorer, uh, if you look at it up right at the top here on this blue section, you'll see right at the top, it says File Explorer and it shows you that little folder. See the little folder? It looks like a folder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I get Windows File Explorer? Well, if I, <coughs> excuse me, if I, you know, in my, you're only going to ever do this once. In my opening, opening screen, uh, it gives you the ability to look for files. You can search for files, right, anywhere on your disk. And so if I type into this little bar here, which Windows allows me to do, right, um, when I press, well, excuse me, how do we get there? We press the start, the start button, right? So if we press start, right, um, we, and, and start typing, you can start typing File Explorer and you'll see it'll suddenly say, there it is right at the top. See it? It's found a file mm -hmm. for me instantly, the program called File Explorer. That's a program. And all I have to do now is click on this. And File Explorer will open up and show you the files in a familiar layout. File Explorer will now appear on that blue bar at the bottom. Remember I told you that's just where your favorites are? So the first thing you should always do is instantly right click on that little icon, this little icon here that looks like that. See that in, on my screen, mm -hmm. File Explorer? It'll be at the bottom and pin it. And now you've got File Explorer forever. It's always gonna be on the bottom. When I need File Explorer next time, I don't have to go look for it. Just click on that button at the bottom, okay? So, there it is, click there and it opens up. Now, Fly Explorer looks something like this, right? Now, first it looks very complicated, but mostly we're never really going to oh, see this okay. part of it. It shows you all your disk drives, right? So, here they are. I've got a disk drive called C, I've got a disk drive called M, and I've got a disk drive called P, right? Why I've got three drives instead of you will only have C, doesn't matter, right? Not important. And it's showing me that I can, I can click on any of those disk drives and see more of what's on it. In your case, you've only got the C drive. It doesn't gonna matter. It's gonna take you right to the C drive. Now, what this little line here means, it says local disk C drive, and it shows me this is the whole disk, the whole gray bar, and the blue section is how much I have used of it. So you can see that I've used about three quarters of my disk, right? So I've got plenty of space available. If I start running out, I should just go and delete unnecessary files, right? It's showing me I'm using about three quarters. Okay, yeah. I'm going to come back to the, this. I'm going to skip over. This is not that important. Okay, here we go. Right, so as soon as I have got the C drive open, right? This is what mm -hmm. we see. Now let's finish this and then we'll finish off next time. So <clears throat> you'll see here it says local disk C drive. So the left is kind mm -hmm. of going all the things that I can see. The only two that I'm gonna be interested in is up here you can see the desktop. So if I double click on that, where it, see where it says desktop? I double mm -hmm. click on that, the desktop will open. I can go to the desktop. Very seldom do that because as I said to you, the desktop is not a good place to store your stuff. It's kind of like having a messy desk. There's a better way to do it. And that's using the C drive. And yeah, under the C drive, below the C drive, you'll see a whole lot of file folders. Can you see the file folders? Mm -hmm. right, there's one that's mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. perf logs with a file icon next to it. Doesn't matter what perf log is, we're not going to look there. Here's a more important one. It says program files, right? There's a folder mm -hmm. and it's got all my programs in there. Don't mess with it. That's where your software sits. You mess with it, you're in trouble. But on the right, well, it shows it in more detail, right? So yeah, you can see them on the left and you can, you see the scroll bar over here, by the way, guys, you see the scroll bar? Yeah. It's usually got yeah. an up arrow and a down arrow at the bottom. You can see the down arrow. And you see the gray bar or the dark gray? Uh -huh, uh -huh, if I uh -huh. put my cursor on this and I hold it down, the left mouse down, what's going to happen? It's going to grab that bar move, move. and then I can move it up and down, right? Scroll uh -huh. up and down. That's the quick way to scroll up and down. So on the right here, it, the, the highlighted is the local disk. And here are all the folders in the local disk. You see the folder, you see the folder uh, yep. icon on the left? Yep. 
Now, when you get down to the three at the bottom, there's no folder icon. Those are not folders. Wow. Those are actual oh. files. And wow. it says, here's a file called the, 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 the bottom one. Let's look at the bottom one. Swap, Swap file dot SYS. So dot SYS is the type of file. And that means it's a system file. It belongs to Windows. Do not ever mess with system files. If you mess okay. with it, it's like putting the wrong, you know, putting oil, putting oil in your gas tank of your car instead of gas. <laughs> it's not going to do any good. It's going to wreck the whole thing. But I'm showing you this, and it has three little pieces of information. It has a date, a time, and then a number here. The date and the time is when that file was last updated or created, right? Usually the Where Windows, are you? the Windows Where are you? they track to when you got the Why? computer. They might be 2018 or 17 or 19. They, they, they don't change much, right? So that's the date and the time when it was last updated. And then here will be the size of the file. So this file is 16,384 KB. KB kilobytes. stands for kilobytes, thousands of bytes. So without getting into the detail, this is a 16 million byte file, 16 million characters, right? Which sounds a lot. But actually, today is very small. This yeah. one, two above it, 4,959,576. That's four million. Million. Characters. million. Four gigabytes, 4,000 million. Mm. So these are huge files, right? <laughs> and your files will never be anything of this size. Your files will be more like this little one at the bottom or much smaller even. But don't worry about it. You've got plenty of disk space. And now, again, I can see all the files just by scrolling up and down. and <clears throat> so, so when so, you're saving, don't don't save to to documents. I'm say again. Like if I'm doing something from Word and I want to save it, you're saying don't save it in documents. Save it in yes. C drive? So save it into. So one of these things over here is documents. You see this one over here. And yeah. documents is where all my stuff is. My documents, right? They should really call it my documents. In other words, they don't belong to Windows. That's for me. So in documents is usually where I would store my files and I can now create new subdirectories, for example. So notice what it's saying here. It's stored on this PC as opposed to up in the cloud and it's the local disk, right? <clears throat> how do you, how do you make files and subfiles? Okay. So <clears throat> let's go back and then we'll, then we'll end off. That's a very good question. Okay. So <clears throat> over here, it's showing me my files. But first of all, there's a little arrow here. Can you see this arrow going up, pointing up? Yes. That means mm -hmm. go up to the previous level, if there is one. When you're really at the C drive, there's nowhere up to go up. You're at the top. But if I come down to, let's say, this subdirectory, this directory here called Windows, that directory called Windows is where all Windows stuff is. Again, don't mess with it. I'm just using an example. So if we go to the next one, okay. So now notice here I've opened the Windows subdirectory. I just clicked on it. Mm -hmm. So notice at the top mm -hmm. it says you're on this PC, your local disk C in Windows, and that will show you all the subfolders in Windows. So he has a subfolder called Curses. I can have different kinds of curses, big ones, small ones, red, whatever. If I double click on that, I will see a whole lot of programs below, right? And you. And yeah. here they yeah. are. There are a whole lot of files mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are of type .cur. So it's a special kind of type of file which you and I don't care about. It's a cursor file. Don't mess with them, right? So your big cursor, your small cursor, your red cursor, whatever it like, is in that, is in that particular file, okay? So <clears throat> notice it says you're on the local disk, you're in Windows, see the little arrow, Windows, it's showing you going down. If from cursors I press the little up arrow, it would take me back to Windows. It would take me up. A so imagine you're going down, you've got the C drive, then you've got a folder called Windows, then you've got a folder called cursors, and I can go back up or I can go back down, right? And you can have yeah. folders within folders within folders. But <clears throat> I want to show you, sorry, I'm looking for this one. Okay, so the arrow will take you up 
And creating a new folder is really very, very simple, right? I need a new menu. Last thing and then we're done. I need a new menu, one of which is create a new folder, right? How do I get a new menu? Who remembers? Right click. Right click, excellent. So anywhere mm -hmm. on the screen, I right click, this little menu will pop up. You see this little menu? One mm -hmm. of the things is I can sort yeah. the files by alphabetic or by date or by size. Usually alphabetic is fine. That's the best way. I want files that start with an A to be at the top and files that start with Z to be at the bottom. That's the easiest way. But you could sort them by date. Let's say I can't remember the name of a file, but I know that I created it in May this year. Sort them by date and you'll see the ones that may created in May that will all be together. Very seldom need that. But one entry on here is new folder, new. And when I click on that, it says new folder because that's the only option. And if I now click on folder, right, then a little, a little, a new folder. Will you see the folder sign here? Ooh, and yeah. here's its name, new folder. Yeah. Well, that's a stupid name. That's what it's going to call it. But notice it's highlighted. I that when I start name. typing, what do you think is going to happen? So it's going to overtype that stupid new folder because it just gave it a name so it's got some name right so if you don't actually name your folders they're going to end up being called new folder one new folder two <laughs> new folder three which oh. is kind of useless <laughs> <laughs> but you can always is. overtype that you can all if you accidentally you forgot to type the name and it's now a new folder you can just go click on the name right click on the name any name you can right click and you can overtype the name. So here, I wouldn't call it new folder. I will call it letters to my children, or the, I'm writing in a great American novel, the great American novel, chapter one. I could call the folder that, anything you like. Okay, see that, Rosa? Yes. So that's how you do it. So you create a folder called letters to my children, or my autobiography, chapter one, whatever you happen to be doing. And okay. You type in the name there and that folder is now created and now you can save documents into that folder. If you want to have how a sub do you make folder, a sub a subfolder under there. Exactly the same way. So you open up that folder. So you see this folder, this folder, new folder here. Let's say I called it uh, family pictures. Right? Now I've got a folder called family pictures. If I click on that, it will open up. It'll open that folder, right. but there'll be nothing inside. Now I can right click again, the little menu will pop up and I can create a new folder. So it's family pictures, uh, wedding pictures. And then I can create another subfolder called grandchildren pictures and whatever I like and have as many uh, as I okay. like. So I can have as many subfolders within a folder as I like. And if I right click on any one of those folders, I can create a new one down below and I can go down as far as I like. Got the idea? So you can create this to look exactly the way you want. Imagine your physical file folder, you know, where you keep your papers. Well, it's got, you know, big metal file cabinet. It's got five drawers, right? The drawers are folders, right? Big folders. Or rather the drawers you could regard as the C drive, the D drive, the E drive, right? Let's say you open one, the top drawer, that's the C drive. Inside it, you see folder A. So Manila folder marked A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Mm -hmm. But inside any of those folders, I could put documents. I could put bills and receipts and whatever I like into there. And you wouldn't really do it in real life. I could put another folder inside there. Probably wouldn't do that. But yeah, I can have as many folders as I like. So I can say correspondence with the Social Security Administration, because I had a big hassle, which actually happened to me, with my social security, right? I then had a folder called correspondence with SSA. And then underneath that I had matter A, matter B, matter C, matter D. And inside of those were all the documents, the word documents that I typed when I sent them a letter or, or emails or whatever, right? So you can save this information any way you like. And it's entirely up to you. You can have as many folders as you like. You can have subfolders. You don't have to have subfolders if you don't want them. You can always store the document into the appropriate folder, right? So now when you type save as, 
you can select the folder. You'll see the folders pop up and you can click on the one that you, I want this document to go into letters to the IRS or letters to my doctor. There will be that folder. You just double click on that. And now when you type the name of this new document, letter on June 27th, 2020, whatever I call the letter, right? I can now put it into that particular folder or that subfolder or that sub subfolder. Everybody got it? It sort of sounds complicated once you've done it once or twice. It's kind of like riding a bicycle. It's so obvious that there's, you know, you say, well, how could I not have understood that before? The first time yeah. sounds really complicated. It actually yeah. isn't. It is. Yeah. It's really very simple. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. I need, I need to go backwards because I, I don't understand File Explorer. What happens is if I have a new uh, folder, what I would do is I'll say File, Save As, then I put in Documents, then I name it. And I never, I never use File Explorer at all. I just go back to the name of the document. So I don't understand File Explorer. You don't understand File Explorer. File Explorer is just a program, right? It's mm -hmm. a program, right? Which belongs to Windows and it's mm -hmm. there for you to use. Now, File Explorer, as the name suggests, allows you to explore your files. You can see them. If you but, didn't but, but, create but, any folders, you put everything into documents without any subfolders, that's fine, right? You don't have oh. to have folders. But if you want to separate your files you know, into a logical sequence, put the, all the documents that are of a certain interest to you in one folder, you can do that. But you don't have to. You can put all your documents into documents mm -hmm. and that will work just fine. But to see them, you need the File Explorer. Now, when you open Windows, uh, uh, sorry, Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Word, for example, when you open mm -hmm. Microsoft Word and you want to open a document, when you click on, you'll see there'll be the little file folder in the top left hand corner. Looks like a mm -hmm. folder like this. When you click on that, mm -hmm. that means I want to open a folder. It will then automatically show you exactly what File Explorer shows you. And you can click on oh, documents. Okay. You can click on documents, okay. say my documents in there, or you can click on documents and then you'll see a subfolder called my letters and you can click on that and then the letter that you were typing last week or yesterday will be in there there'll be a document called you know letter to jeff with a date okay. on it right and that's the one i want to open it'll open that document file you see that so you can have folders mm -hmm. or you don't have to have folders it's entirely your mm -hmm. choice i like to have folders because it's really easy to end up with lots and lots and lots of files and then it's hard to find them right so I, I'm a sort of naturally neat guy and I like to have them like in folders in my my physical filing cabinet. So I keep my, 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 my receipts separately from my letters, right? See that? Just keep oh. them separate. But if you want to put them all together in one big folder, that's fine as well. well no, no, they, they, won't, they won't be, as you said, they won't be in one big folder. You can name one folder family, one folder church, one folder taxes, one folder... Exactly. And then you have yeah, exactly. But, but, and, but, and there's but, no limit. You can have as many as you like. So it's yeah, much easier to have a folder called, let's say you said church. It's much mm -hmm. easier to have a folder called church. I click on it and it shows me all the letters or all the, 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 the bulletins mm -hmm. I got from the church, the church or adver, you know, ads about functions the church is having or you know, Bible study or whatever you like would be under church. It doesn't have to be. They can all be together, right? You can have all your okay. documents. Windows will always show you your documents A to Z. So you can always right. scroll down and find them. But you know, if you've, just, if you've got 200 and 300 documents and they're all together in one folder, it's a bit of a pain in the neck to be scrolling up and looking for the one that I want. It's much easier to have a folder called chess club. I'm, I'm the president of my chess club, right? There's a folder chess club and there's all the things that I've had to do as a president. There'll only be 10 or 20 there. That's much easier than looking through two or 300 documents. It's exactly the same as, you know, you can keep all your papers on your desk, piled this high. That works just fine. But it's kind of hard to find stuff, right? It's much easier to put them in folders and then put them, you know, in your bookcase. See that? Mm -hmm. In fact, that's a very good analogy. I'm looking at my bookcase on the other side of the room. I can just throw all my books into the book. They're all there, 
right? It's kind of hard to find a book. It's much e easier to have section, right? History, science, math, geography, you know, religion, whatever. Much easier to have sections in your bookcase. But you don't have to. You can just file the, all your books in alphabetic order from A to Z. But it would be easier to have folders. I, 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 hate, I hate to ask the same question again, but sure. if, if I put them in file, document, and then name my different folders, what is File Explorer doing? File Explorer That's is allowing you to see all the files and the folders. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I come to your computer for the first time, I have no idea how you named your documents, how you stored them. I would mm -hmm. call up File Explorer and I would see all the folders, all the oh, A, so all the B, all so the C. And then you said, hey, I need you to help me. Jeff, I need you to help me with this Word document. Something's gone wrong. So I would say, where did you store it? And you'd say, I stored it in folder C, correspondence, let's say. I got a folder called correspondence. They would open correspondence and then I would be able to see all the documents in correspondence. Instead of having to look through all the hundreds of documents on your computer, I know it's in correspondence, right? Mm -hmm. And it's in a file called, you know, letter to my congressman on May the 15th, 2020, whatever the letter is, or letter mm -hmm. to the city council about my water bill, right? Okay. I'm having a whole hassle with water bills with the Atlanta city council, right? They screwed up big time. I got a whole set of folders of letters that have gone back and forth and emails and so on. They're all in one place. Right, they're all in one place. So, uh, uh, file, file Explorer is simply there to allow you to see them. But you can also, in Word or Excel, when you open Word, Excel, and you open a document, it will also allow you to look at the folders. So, there's kind of like a mini version of, in, of File Explorer inside Word and Excel. Okay. But it isn't okay. there inside uh, emails and stuff like that. That's somewhat different. Right there, so you could you could go and get a document out of your word uh, out of your folders, a word document, and you could copy some text out of it, and then you could go to your email and paste that text from that word document which you got out of a certain file in a certain folder into a it, into an email, and then you could send that email to me. Right, you see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just a way of seeing what's on your computer. You, you don't have to use File Explorer. You don't have to use it at all. I just find it extremely useful because I don't have to remember very much, right? I look at my file folders and I know what's in them. Okay, we've gone a little over, but I hope that's answered the question. Again, you have my email. So please send me uh, an email if you would like to get all of this material, exactly what you're seeing here, I will send to you. Or if you have additional questions, do not hesitate. Just send me an email and I promise to the best of my ability that I will try and answer them. If I can't answer them, I'll look it up and find out for you. Thank you very much. Have a great day the rest of the week. Whatever day is today, I don't know. I think today is Groundhog Day, right? <laughs> Whatever day it is. No, no. <laughs> a little late. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know what day of the week it is anymore, but whatever day it is, enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. <laughs> Thank bye. You. Bye. Okay. Mm. Mm, shit.